you know, you know, the car symbolized freedom, you know, in the 20th century. I mean, imagine uh, the freedom we would have with developing anti-gravitic machines. Exactly. Okay, I, I mean, just imagine. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, for many people that sounds so out there and so far in the future, and I, you know, and that's, um, you know, and I guarantee you, I think it's right around the corner. It's eminent. And, Absolutely. You know, it's the same as it was before the Wright brothers flew the first plane, you know. Two weeks prior to that, everybody would have said, oh, you know, the day that we're able to lift thousands of pounds of or of material up in the air with just the power of the wind, you know, it, it, most people would have said it's not going to happen. And even after the Wright brothers did it, you know, most physicists said it was a hoax because mm-hmm. at the time that didn't sound right. It, you know, our laws of physics didn't allow for a mass producing enough wind velocity to lift its own mass or itself against the gravitational field. So right. it so- at the time, it sounded like an over-unity device. And, you know, it took three years in the U.S., before they stopped saying it was a hoax, and it took five years in Europe. But very rapidly, a world changed after that discovery. You know, within a few years, we were moving, you know, uh, letters, and then eventually, uh, you know, mail across the country, and then eventually people and all this. And it changed our world completely. Nowadays, people get on a, you know, I don't know how many ton jet, you know, uh, they fly with some hundreds of passengers across the ocean to other countries, uh, to Australia and so on, and they don't think about it twice. Well, you know, very soon, it may be the case that um, you get on a little saucer-like thing and not even think twice about going to have lunch on the moon. Yes. Absolutely. And, uh, and that, that can occur very rapidly, and it will change our civilization very fundamentally. Because currently, um, you know, we have this belief that there's a limited amount of resources, there's a limited amount of energy, there's a limited, limited amount of uh, space for us to develop in, and so we war. Uh, thinking we have to fight for the remaining resources. Well, you know, uh, as soon as this occurs and we realize there's an infinite amount of energy and that we can control gravitational fields and go anywhere we want, um, you know, all of a sudden all that goes away. All the stressors Mm -hmm. on our existence go away so that most likely our civilization would mature into a peaceful civilization. Yes. Well, you know, Nassim, um, you know, according to my research, you know, and some of the gravitational uh, calculations that I've done, is that uh, uh, with a gravity drive, there is no upper speed limit. You know, you're not limited by Einstein's special relativity. You can go as fast as you want, you know, so so you have this warp drive uh, equation that was uh, developed in, you know, in in the TV series uh, Star Trek. But, uh, you know, with the gravitational equations, there's no upper speed limit. That's right, because um, if if you are able to modify the curvature of space time, you can modify it to create... um, uh, singularity and uh, you know ma- basically a, a artificial mini black hole and you know and that brings uh, at the event horizon that brings you right up to the speed of light but uh, if you uh, cross the event horizon then you go super luminous and basically w- what's going on is that you basically uh integrating back to the vacuum, and since the vacuum is everywhere, then 
you can pop out anywhere you want. See, the, the current concepts of physics, that, if you, that in order to go from this side of the galaxy to the other side of the galaxy, you'd have to warp it um, a little bit with the idea that if you, if you take one corner of a, of a sheet and another corner of a sheet, uh, if you try to go uh, across the sheet, that's a long distance, but if you bend the sheet of paper so that the corner touch, then it's very close. Well, that's all fine if you're thinking of space-time as a sheet of paper, like as a two-dimensional flat space. But I don't think space-time is like that at all. Actually, my, my equation that proves that the nuclei of atom is a black hole shows that everything is already infinitely warped. Everything is curved to infinity. That's mm -hmm. why the vacuum connects all things. And so basically, you're not quite warping space-time. You're actually using the wormholes that are already there that connects all things, uh, which is the vacuum structure. And you're just popping in and out of the vacuum structure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's fascinating. You don't need to even think about your hand doing that because you see, if we're actually in a dynamical open system, even the movement of your hand, is, if you're completely honest about it, is already moving at super luminous or at least luminous speed. Because if I calculate how long it takes for my hand from to go from A to B. Um, if I'm totally honest, while it's doing a, going from A to B, I have to add the speed of the rotation of the Earth because it's slightly modifying the movement of my hand. And then if, I, uh, if I'm honest, again, I've got to add the movement of our solar system inside the galaxy. And then I have to add, you know, the movement of the galaxy and the galaxy in the cluster and the supercluster and all those speeds. Now my hand is moving at millions of miles per second. So how is my hand actually moving? Well, the only way to solve that riddle is to take a completely different approach. And that is, is that my hand is doing, undoing, doing, undoing, doing, undoing. It's remaking itself very, very rapidly at the speed of light. And so it's like a movie. It looks continuous. But it actually, you know, is... It's my hand, and it's the vacuum. It's my hand, and it's the vacuum. It's my hand, and it's the vacuum. And just like a movie, you don't see the, 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 the holes in between the frames because it's doing it so fast you can't tell. Mm -hmm. hmm. So basically, m movement in our universe... Would be, it would be just like my hand, you know, and we know the electron and the positron alienate and reappear, you know, go to the uh, exchange with the vacuum and reappear and exchange with the vacuum. By the way, that's how everything informs every, the vacuum, what it's doing. That's why the vacuum is able to self-organize and create the complexity of our biospheres because everything is constantly informing it. And and when, uh, you know, but if I could uh, manipulate the vacuum, then I could get my hand to disappear here, but instead of reappearing, you know, fractions of a billionth of a second later beside it, um, I could get it to reappear, uh, you know, on the other side uh, at point B without having to go through all the... the points in between. Uh-huh. Well, that's a very fascinating concept of uh, travel. Very fascinating. Yes. And, uh, now, you know, know it, um, you know, in my research here, you know, that a gravity drive is really a machine that uh, interacts with the vacuum. In other words, it transfers energy back and forth, okay, to the vacuum. Right, just like an atom, as described in the equation that I was given. Um, just like everything, you know, it's basically 